Welcome to Cage Free Voices Radio Network, an innovative educational entertainment radio show where youth and adults have the opportunity to see themselves even if the world is blind. I'm really excited uh, today because you guys are in for a treat. We have QMV with us and Scott Siddle. QMV is a musical genius on the rise who is sure to take the world by storm with his passion, lyrical content, and convictions. Scott Siddle combines his pastoral background with graphic art to combine moments, to capture moments, and unexpressed words through the website and logo design for small businesses to build the kingdom of God. I can't wait to discuss how you so effortlessly, Scott, captured the heart and mind of QMV without communicating with him directly. So greetings, Q uh, Scott and QMV. Thank you for being with us today. Say something to the people. Hey, good morning or afternoon or evening, wherever you're at, folks. It's good to be here. Yeah, hello. <laughs> so laid back quick just like an artist yeah hello uh, he wants you to hear his deep voice huh um so let's let's go ahead and dive right in let's start with q and v i want you to begin talking about who you are and your introduction to hip-hop where did all of this begin um well as you know i'm an artist um, um, it kind of just began off like inspiration, um, from listening to other artists that I look up to. Um, I had, uh, my cousin, he did music, um, one of my friends did music and then uh, I just kind of wanted to do music too. So I just started doing it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how I became inspired to do it. Who, who introduced you to hip hop? Um, probably my, this guy I went to church with, his name is Ike Hill. He's a, he's a official artist. He goes on tours and stuff. Um, he kind of, I feel like he kind of inspired me to start rapping. Oh yeah. So did he introduce you to like just rap in general or gospel hip hop? Like, cro do you know anything about like cross movement and Lecrae? Like who's your favorite hip hop artist? Yeah. Definitely um, Lecrae. I listened to a lot of Lecrae when I was young. And then I'm um, obviously NF a few years later. NF. You know? I love NF. And I think like Lecrae used to, um, uh, you feel free to chime in, Scott, because I know you yeah. like But um, Lecrae, I started off with cross movement, just loving cross movement because I didn't know that there was like gospel hip hop music out there. And so I was pretty much... Um, starving for hip hop music as a Christian. And then some of my friends at Virginia Tech um, introduced me to cross movement. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like this is awesome to be able to put the, the Bible and lyrical content and form. And so I, I transitioned from like listening to cross movement only to listening to Reach. Well, it wasn't Reach Records at the time. I think McCray was like doing uh, Kids Across America. Anybody familiar with Kids Across America? I think so yeah yeah so he started off with kids across america and i was listening to like after the music stops y'all remember that album yeah. Yeah. I think so. yeah um so i i love that album and then i you know i was listening to him and i think it's show baraka um oh, yeah. a few other artists uh propaganda mm. and then years later i find out about nf and that was like one of the first thing that I, thing that I noticed about you, Q and B, when um, when I met you and you were spit. I asked you to spit some bars because I could tell that you were a rap artist. Um, I was like, he's probably more along the lines of like F, right? Right. So I can see you going in that direction. I want to shift questioning over to Scott right now, who is. Um, with us and who was able to capture your heart with the cover art for your single. Um, so, Scott, is hip-hop your preference? When were you introduced to gospel hip-hop or just hip-hop in general? You two represent two different generations, so I'm interested in hearing your thoughts. All good questions and what? I don't 
I don't look like your typical hip hop guy. <laughs> <laughs> I I grew up with you know with music in my life. My mom would always be playing something, you know, and that was you know her her music was the fifties and sixties and into the seventies and um, you know so I mean she she'd uh, <laughs> when it was cleaning day at the house she put on her Johnny Mathis albums and just crank them. <laughs> I'm like. Okay. My first album was actually Kiss Live. Um, and I listened to it on her big old huge, you know, living room record console. And uh, shortly after that, I got my own stereo system for my room. So I mean, I was I was always hard rock, you know, 70s, 80s rock, you know, and then that's kind of when hip hop and, you know, before that, it was blues and, you know, Southern gospel and, you know, some of that and, you know, out of i think the disco movement came you know true hip-hop you know and in the 80s when i was getting out of high school the early 80s that's when you know that's when we had just a plethora of you know different music i had friends of mine that were getting into ska I had friends who were getting into hip-hop and rap you know all this stuff and i was still just kind of the headbanger and uh but i mean if you look at my playlist i've got a little bit of everything you know i go back you know a little bit you know KJ52 was one of my favorites when I first heard him. I was like, dude, this guy just kills it. Yeah, you he's know? awesome. And, you know, of course, Toby Mac, you know, is is incredible in what he does and what he's brought to, you know, everything and, and the crossover of, of the music and everything. So, you no, know, if you look at my playlists, I've got a little bit of everything, everything from classical to rap to hard rock to, you know, everything in between. So um yeah that's how, that's how we bonded scott with the rock front right yeah <laughs> music and my playlist probably looks very much like yours because it is very eclectic yeah um, so let's yeah, look cool. at a step further scott where do you see the intersection of hip-hop and the fine arts with ministry some are reluctant to embrace this mm. genre of music and even rock as well well, you know, I was thinking about that when I saw that question, you know, in my email and it was like, you know, right there on the bottom of the screen, it says using performing arts to transform the culture. Um, music has been a part of any culture for a long time. Um, I was in a men's study the other morning, weekly study, and it came up of music in church, you know, as a matter of fact, and that there's some denominations that don't use musical instruments and they just use their voices, um, you know. I see it as um, being able to bridge the gap. You know, not everybody likes the same kind of music. Um, I found out, I have a friend of mine that told me of a, a ministry, I think it's in Texas. Um, they've got multi campuses. I think they've got like five or six different campuses, but they're all within a two or three block radius of each other. Mm. And the uniqueness of that ministry is that each venue, each church gathering, has their own music. One of them is hard rock. One of them is classic gospel. One of them is hymns. One of them is, you know, and it's like, that's what reaches people, you know, mm -hmm. um, some people in some churches and, you know, some of some people within the Christian community don't like hip hop. And they're like, that has no place in Christianity. But what about those people that it is reaching? What about mm -hmm. those people that QMV is going to reach with his music? that some country singer is not going to reach, you know? So I think it's, I think it's a vital part of our culture, both within the church community and within our community in general. You know? How do you see that blending with like the fine arts, considering like you're a graphic artist, um, hip hop and the fine arts, like graphic art, um, even cause considering like that a lot of uh, content or, um, interactions between people are um, is now virtual. So do you foresee, you know, like this um, intersection between the fine arts and hip hop happening virtually? And if so, how? I think I think it already has begun. Um, as for me personally, I want to try and put, you know, that positive positive spin onto it, um, that it's not what some people think it is. You know, um, it's, it's a, 
I don't want to, the only term that's coming to mind is a tool. Um, it's, it's, it's a venue actually to be able to bring people in because the visual aspect is going to draw them into the, you know, hearing aspect, you well, know, the audio gonna, aspect. I want to get to that too, because it's reminding me of the process of Quint selecting, you know, deciding what he wanted for his cover art. Quint, QMV, do you, um, I'm used to calling you Quint. I know your stage name is QMV. QMV, do you, um, do you agree with Scott, like in how like the fine arts comes together with like hip hop music and the importance of using it for the ministry, right? Uh, for or just for ministry. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I think cover art um, has a big, um, and like fine arts has a big, um, is a big part of um, hip hop music because um, I feel like it um, portrays what the song is about. Um, yeah. Why was it so important for you to have like a specific type of cover art for your song? Um, well, I want, I want people like, it kind of like, I feel like it's more creative if you have a cover art that kind of, um, in a way portrays what the song is about in like a creative way. Um, and, um, the cover art was pretty creative the way that it was designed. I liked it. What do you believe? So, so talk a little bit about like, uh, Scott and QMV, either one of you can start with this process first. Um, talk a little bit about what you what you envisioned when you when you when, well, what you thought about. When, I'll start with you, QMV. What you thought about when you saw the cover? What did it say to you uh, once you received the the cover? Um, well, once I first. Once um, you first sent it to me, and I um, and I saw it, I thought it was um, thought it was really um, cool, and then like I kind of just like looked at it for a little bit, and just um, I liked how um, it was like showing like hands coming for like the mind, like kind of like people like attacking your mind and kind of like um, trying to influence you. That's what that's the way that I perceived it, like. People are like trying to come at you and reach you from different um, places that try to um, influence you to do different things. When you um, so going to Scott now, because I'm going to come back to the que this question for you, QMV Scott, um, Scott. When what did you think of immediately when you received communication about the song? Well, it was you know you had sent me Battle of the Mind and not a lot else you know and i was like okay so i was I, I i just began praying about it it's like okay lord what what is it and i didn't know qmv what you know what you just said now and that that just really got me because that's exactly what god impressed on my heart was the whole messing with our minds stuff that's going on in this generation it's not just a physical thing it's it's i i went back to that little cartoon of the good angel and the bad angel you know sitting on your shoulders going hey you know no you can do this or no you better do this or no you're going to get away with this and and it took me to um to james 1 1 2 through 8 and second timothy 4 3 essentially that battle within of faith against doubt you know um no matter what generation we all have that battle i think it's a little bit more um increased and a little bit more to the forefront with the current generation that's coming up. Um, they're facing, you know, people in, in QMV's generation are facing things that, you know, your generation and my generation haven't had to face, you know, because the influence that, that tickling of the ears, you know, but it's the battle between sound doctrine and tickling of the ears and messing with the mind. And, the enemy constantly wants to throw that little seed of doubt inside our mind to mess with it and and pull us away and have that battle. And so with that, I was just like, okay, Lord, lead me, show me what's 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 gonna hit, you know? And <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> um 
QMV, when you first started writing the lyrics to this song, who did you have in mind as your audience? As my audience? Um, um, just um, a lot of people that um, I, I knew that I was going to go to, um, I was on the way to, I was going to go to college in about a month when I writ, wrote that song. So I was like, um, this is a good message to share with people, new people that I meet. And um, um, just other people that I've met within my life that have some, um, somewhat gone down the wrong road and I've just watched it slowly happen. So um, I felt like I kind of um, made this song for those people and hopefully mm -hmm. they, they can hear it and um, be impacted. But you're kind of getting to like my next question of like, how are you hoping this song will impact your generation? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm hoping that it will like, and like kind of um, uh, make people think a little bit, you know, um, like think about what their life, um, what um, purpose their life is and um, um, what um, things that um, the Lord would want them to do. Mm, I love that. I love that. Okay, so before we um, play the song, can you spit a few bars for us? Um, I guess. Um, you better do it because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can go grab my. I can go grab my drum and I can beat along with you, but that's about it, brother. So you can spit a few bars from Can't Get Close. We want to see you live in that action. You don't have to do a full verse, but we just want to hear a couple of bars. All right. Um, all of a sudden, I can't remember any of the lyrics. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll just... I'll just start, do the intro and spit a few bars, I guess. All right, let's go. All right. Um, fighting battles in my mind, the devil's the only one that's my opponent. The struggle is real. Now many know how I feel, cause I never actually show it. To be able to overcome all sin, you gotta have the right motives. Wise men know to maintain a strong mind, you gotta know how to control it. Put <laughs> inside of my life still trying to figure things out i don't want meant for more than most in life so i take a different route all i care about is making a difference i never care to fit in the crowd no time to waste trying to be great therefore i can't sit around all right because <laughs> oh, i was waiting for the beat to drop because i know the when the beat drops on the song yeah as long as i got time i can't waste the eight I love that. I love that i think that's my favorite verse of the song well guys here is Two MVs can't get close. I'm going to go ahead and play the song for you guys. Bear with me while I pull it up. Battles in my mind, the devil's the only one that's my opponent. Struggle this girl, not many know how I feel, cause I never actually show it. Took the ever to overcome all sin, you gotta have the right motives. Wise men know to maintain a strong mind, you gotta know how to control it. Put the pieces together inside of my life, still trying to figure things out. I don't want men for more than most in life, so I take a different route. All I care about is making a difference, I never care to fit in the crowd. No time to waste trying to be right there, for I can't sit around. Cause as long as I got time, I can't waste it. Ay, I'm on the way. Up and I'm pretty sure that's safe to say. Once like me about us, how to find that's in extra space. But what is my talent worth if I don't use it to make a change? Yeah, he be trying to get close, uh, but I will let him get a hold of me. I'm staying on the right road, uh, can't let the devil take control of me. God's helped me through the most, so I always put him over me. I'll never sell my soul, and I pray the Lord my soul to keep. He be trying to get close, uh, but I will let him get a hold of me. I'm staying on the right road, uh, can't let the devil take control of me. Me. 
you guys helped me through the most So I always put him over me, I never sell my soul And I put the Lord in my soul to kill you Won't let him get a hold of me Won't let the devil take control of me Always put him over me Try and instead it closer to the Lord and stay the farthest away from sin. I promise I'm more hopeless you will be the farther you are away from him. I'm on a mission that go make a difference, and that's the only my state I'm in. And I keep the spirit of all my army for the battles I face with them. Yeah, gotta focus on what matters the most. No time for anything else. Only listen to the Holy Ghost and I block out the lies that enemy tells. I know where I'll be without the one that picked me up every time I struggle to belt. And if you don't like what I'm doing, I don't care until I die, I'm being myself. No matter who you are, what you do, what you have, I guarantee you are proud. If you feel alone, aside of your own, I know somebody that can help you to solve them. He's always there anytime you need him. I promise all that you gotta do is call him. He'll make sure you're always protected and helping you up whenever you're falling. Choices you make later on in life impact you drastically. They truly can depict if you live sad or you live happily. The good thing about fighting on your own is you don't have to be. Cause if you follow God, you'll be endured in everlasting peace. He me trying to get close, uh, but I will let him get a hold of me. I'm staying on the right boat. Uh, can't let the devil take Control of me, God's helped me through the most So I always put him over me I'll never sell my soul And I pray the Lord my soul to keep Demons try to get close, uh But I won't let them get a hold of me I'm staying on the right boat, uh Can't let the devil take control of me God's helped me through the most So I always put him over me I'll never sell my soul And I pray the Lord my soul to keep uh. Won't let him get a hold of me all right, that was QMV with can't get close. Um, let's add him back into the stream. That was QMV with can't get close. Um, so before we close out everything, I want to give you both a shot at this one. Tell me what makes you cage free. Either one of you can go. Um, all right. Um, I guess I'll go first. Um, I'd say, um, obviously, the Lord. Um, and um, his um, purpose for me is what makes me free. Yeah. Mm. And what do you believe is your purpose? Um, um, regardless of what I do, obviously I do music, but um, just to um, be able to reach other people and impact others in any way possible. I feel like that's what um, I was put on the search for. Mm, that's good, Kimberly. Scott? Yeah, that's really good. Plus, he's got a heritage of people doing the same thing. <laughs> Your family is, you're like living out a legacy, man, just in a different uh, stream. So, um, I mean, as far as page three goes, you know, it's just, for me, it's really following what the Lord has. Um, not chasing, not chasing what the world's chasing. You know, we can get so caught up in that of we've got to have, got to have, got to have, you know, got to do, do, do. And it's not about that. It's about stopping and, you know, instead of looking at our screens all the time, you know, God can use us in the parking lot, you know, to reach somebody. God can use us halfway around the world, you know, in places that we never thought we'd be able to go. Um, you know, and it's just being available, um, putting aside the stuff, you know, uh, my wife and Idina, we've been working at trying to minimize, you know, what we have and realize we don't need, you know, as much, even as much space as what we think we need. 
you know, and when you think about that, it's like, okay, if you're going to bring your space down, that maybe that's enclosing you, but it's actually going to be giving us more freedom, more freedom to move about, more freedom to be involved in different ministries, more freedom to help others. You know, I mean, if it wasn't for being open to God, I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't even have this, you know, connection with QMB right now, you know, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to what God's going to do through his life. So, and his music and everything. So being available, that's, that's being cage free. That's, that's the door being open and spreading the wings. So. That's an ex excellent segue into availability, right? QMV, talk to us about where your single is made available now, where people can get it. Um, pretty much on all platforms. Um, you can type it in anywhere, pop up. Um, you know, obviously the big platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, um, Tidal, um, there's all sorts of platforms. Um, TikTok, obviously. And yeah, it's just, yeah. You can check it all out. Right. Awesome. So guys, make sure you get the single, can't get close. It is available everywhere. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining us for this episode on using performing arts to transform the culture. If you like, if you would like to find out more about QMV, follow him on social media at QMV on YouTube. And then I believe it is underscore dot QMV dot underscore. Um, Oh, and don't forget to reach out to Scott Siddle if you would like to have someone capture the essence of your mind and heart for web development and logo design. Stay tuned for the next episode. And if you liked what you heard and would like your children to be involved in Cage Free Voices Online Learning, feel free to reach us at cfbonlinelearning.com. All right, guys, remember to see yourselves even if the world is blind. Reflect, connect, and transcend every internal and external barrier that will try to cage your voice. Remember, be cage-free. Have a good one. Um. <laughs>